Hey everybody, welcome into Tech Sags Rewind presented by our friends at Yeti. I am David Nuno. Nick Savage, is this the first time since you've been working at Tech Sags, or at least in the building, that you haven't been on the air at some point while working? Oh no. I mean There's uh, been other shows? We, yeah, we've definitely done plenty of shows where I haven't talked before. Not even a hello or like checking nothing? Yeah, we've definitely oh, had a I'm couple sorry. handful. It's all right. No, it's, it's break there's things way more important than me, Mr. Nuno. Oh, that's right. We had breaking news this morning. Yeah. Colin Klein gonna be A and M's new O. C. Who came in to help us with that? Billy Lucci. Oh, and that's Ola right. Buchanan, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh hello. Then after that, we had a former player who spoke up highly about uh, this coaching staff, Mike Elko and Ish and whatnot. Who was that? That would be Devin Morris, okay. former defensive back under Mike Elko. That is correct. And then also we talked a little Aggie basketball with who? Uh, the GOAT, Tom Schuberth. Love him. God, he's such a nice human being. And then we did recruiting country with a guy that I think we all like a lot, Ryan yeah. Broninger. He's good. Yeah, Ronnie was here. It's all right. Yeah, why are you saying it like that? Yeah. It's just, you know, he's here. All right, uh, like, comment, subscribe. We'll, we'll talk about that after. Just watch. I really like, and there, there was, I really like the Colin Klein hire heading into it. Now, I, I was sitting there thinking of, of re recruits and, and what a guy like Connor Wigman could do in this offense, what a guy like Marcel Reed could do, uh, Jalen Henderson with the way he, the, the, this dual threat and, and what they're doing, not only, run, especially running the football in terms of, of, you look at that K-State offense, and then, but also throwing it. And this is a guy that's done. They take shots down the field. Yep. You can see the leveling of the, you know, the passing concepts. But to watch, you know, this this group won the Big Twelve last year at Kansas State. Again, I don't think people quite understand what they're working with there versus a place like this. It's not Bill Snyder's wise. Kansas State I know they had team. Staley. Yeah, it's not Bill. And that's what made Bill Snyder, right, such a legend was he was the one that recruited, did get that amount of talent. They developed the talent now mm -hmm. like no other. But he wins a Big 12 last year. How old is he? Well, he's probably about Johnny's age, maybe a couple, a couple years, years old. I think he's 34. 33. Yeah. Really young, considered very innovative. And uh, like I said, they won the Big 12 last year. They fielded a top 25 offense this year. It feels like they kind of have battled with uh, is it Will Howard that's been mm – -hmm. he's transferring now, but he's in and out with injuries the last couple of years. So when you watch them, when they're on, they're on. And I've watched them carve up Texas. The Longhorn fans are oh, they're 0 4 I watched what they did to, in Austin the last couple – three quarters of that football game. They were – cutting up a defense full of NFL guys and five stars, carving them up to shreds in front of 100,000. They did that to OU, I think, maybe is the last couple of years. Um, so, no, I think, I think this K-State offense and what Colin Klein was doing up there, and then you try to translate it to what could happen here, it's really exciting. One of the I saw a lot of former players reacting when Mike Elko was named the head coach. You were one of the ones that was very outspoken about why you liked it. You just told me at the break you, you spent three years with him. Mm -hmm. What, what excites, excites you so much about Coach Elko? Just nothing but good things to say about Elko. I mean, he's just an incredibly smart, intelligent coach on and off the field. And like you said, he was my coach for three years, so I know him on a personal level more, personal level more than better than other people. So... Um, just nothing but good things to say about him, and I'm excited to see what he does with the program. And as you know, all the hires he's getting now, people are seem excited about it. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what he does. So, could you tell this guy's gonna be a head coach one day? Was did he gave off that vibe very early on? Yeah, for sure. Just like in meetings, um, after practice, when he would talk to the team, just how enthusiastic he was. I could tell like one day he was going to be a head coach. I didn't know it was going to be at A&M, yeah. but I knew he was going to be a head coach one day. What is it about his, because he seems stoic. He seems also like a player's coach, but no nonsense. Like it's help me understand that part of him. Yeah. He, I mean, yes, I would consider him a player's coach, but like you said, no nonsense. He's straightforward with you. Doesn't take any BS. Like he's straightforward, but he on and off the, like on the field, he's serious. But off the field, like, you can go to his house, chill with him, his family. He's that type of guy. What? All right, so when you were here, the program felt like it was going like this. Then it went off the cliff, right? Um, and, it, and it went south quick. When it happened, it happened. And there, and there are reasons. It's not, um, 
injuries, the offense kind of got a little stale. What what do you think? What was ultimately the downfall of uh, of the Jimbo Fisher era? Mm, I can't really say. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I mean, being in the locker room, what a big deal is the new NIL and transfer portal and all that. Um, I I hate it. I don't like where it's going. It's destroying college football. Let's get into it with DePaul. Let us your thoughts on where A and M may be vulnerable against DePaul. Sure. Well, vul- uh, vulnerability comes from overlooking people sometimes, you know. And I don't think A and M has ever done that in the last two or three years. I think they take every opponent very seriously. The scary thing about DePaul, you look at their record; they're one and six. Yeah. They've lost like four or five games at home to inferior opponents. And you think, well, this is going to be a cakewalk. The problem is they're very talented, and they can score in bunches. And I think they're going to eventually figure it out. I don't think they're a very good defensive team at this point. And if I had to compare them to an opponent that we've played earlier this year, I would say they're very similar to SMU without the defensive uh, intensity. Sure, They've got guys that can score at every position. They're long. They're athletic. They've got experience. I mean, most of their players are seniors and graduate students. That scares me. It does. It does. And eventually they're going to win a game they're not supposed to. Hopefully it won't be tonight. Uh, and then they're in the Big East, you know, and they're to by far have the worst record. But I guarantee you they'll beat one of the top Big East teams uh, on the road or at home before the season's over. I'm looking at your write-up of players to watch, and I'm looking at the, the sizes of these dudes. Jeremiah Oden, 6'9". You've got uh, another guy, uh, Deshaun Nelson, six foot eight. All part of their starting lineup, a six foot six guard um, in uh, Elijah Fisher. They're they're big and physical. They are, and they can score. And again, these guys have had success at other places. Odin's from Wyoming. He had a tremendous year there. You know, Carter Chico Carter, their starting guard. He's a transfer from South Carolina that had a lot of success. So eventually, they'll put it together. And again, when you build your team on a lot of transfers, it's going to take a little longer to start gelling. Uh, hopefully we catch them, you know, when they're still uh, in the process of becoming a good team. But I think uh, what Buzz will do is he's worried about our team. I don't think they, they try to take away the strengths of DePaul, but he's more worried about the Aggies. Uh, what, what's been the reaction? Have you had much reaction from uh, recruits, commits on uh, Con Klein being the uh – OC here. Not a lot right now, not from the commitments or, um, you know, prospects or anything like that. I think most of the reaction so far has been from high school coaches, both Jason and I, uh, around the state of Texas. But also, I had a, a coach reach out to me, a trainer actually reach out from to me from uh, that Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas area uh, that has some pretty extensive background of of Colin Klein and him recruiting uh, some of that trainer's kids and. Uh, just he gave me just a, a quick quote on what he thought about the hire, and he's like, his offenses are going to be just like he was as a player, tough and really efficient. And I think that word efficient goes a long way with the A and M fan base, based off what we've watched over the last couple of years, right? Even when the offense was going good, it, how efficient was it? You know, when you talk about scoring in the red zone sure. and converting third downs, all those parts of what Colin Klein's offense has been in 22, but especially in 2023 at Kansas State, are all quality. Like, they're really good numbers. And and especially when you account or take into account that according to overall composite talent, Kansas State was 13th out of 14 teams in the Big 12 this year. So he's doing a lot more with less. One of the things that I've gotten to talk to you about the last week or so and you've written about, and I know the story keeps, I don't want to say evolving, but it keeps – the pieces are still being added to it. The reception that Mike Elko is getting on the road because of his approach, uh, not only his reputation, but the way he's doing the work. Uh, super. I think, you know, it's almost it's almost like you look at it like, man, this was kind of low-hanging fruit. And not that's not to demean the job that mm-hmm. he's doing. It's more to put a scope on how easy it is to be the head coach at Texas A&M and go visit with these high school coaches and how much it's appreciated. Nick, it didn't make the rewind, and it better not make the rewind. But uh, there was a little the gun show, the gun yeah, show no, that I, I had to do, unfortunately. Yeah, that YouTube would demonetize that, so that did not make the uh, the re- uh, rewind, unfortunately. Thank you. Uh, but for you can all... go rewatch it on the Tech Sags live stream if you want. 
But I'm glad that we got over the 200 likes. It'd be yeah. amazing if one of these rewinds got over 200 likes. That's impossible, though, right? People love these rewinds. They, they do. They've been, they've been consuming them lately, so keep it up. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time.